Dziękuję bardzo. Cześć wszystkim. Zanim zacznę, muszę niestety powiedzieć, że ta prezentacja odbędzie się w języku angielskim. Nie dlatego, że nie znam polskiego, po prostu. I want to reach by the uh, audience, because we are international company and some colleagues also on the stream. So let's start. So uh, thank you for coming here uh, offline and watching our online presentation. And my name is Alexander Stupnikov, as you may see. And today I have a topic for you that I brought. It's uh, our experience with Vue.js. So it's not my experience, how it was translated, but our. So why? Because currently I'm a software engineer uh, and also a Scrum Master in the Hapak Lloyd company. So uh, I've been working about two years as a front-end developer mostly, and I want to share with you here um, some experience, some problems we met. Uh, there is a technology that I mostly currently use. Uh, I think you do not find some tricky technologies because uh, in my whole career, I prefer to solve business problems with some existing solutions and do not find some tricky one. And the, it's just solve the problems and uh, it works. Uh, there is QR code to my LinkedIn profile if you are interested to reach me after the presentation. So what we are going to talk about today. Uh, first of all about our company, Hapak Lloyd, because not anyone knows that it's not uh, it's IT kind of company or not. We will decide together. Uh, we will talk about uh, why we have a Vue.js, it was kind of also a popular question. We will discuss some problem solution we find, uh, discuss our testing approach, uh, future improvements, and also I prepared some philosophy topic for you for updating the systems, and question and answer section. So there is not gonna be so much technical stuff because I have to be honest only two goals here, just to make you think a little bit wider and just have fun. So, um, my first question, uh, have some of you seen it on the InfoShare, some orange stands, some container guys? So no one in the hall, but I think maybe somewhere on the online. So yeah, we presented our company, I think for the first time on Inf InfoShare this year in October, one month ago. And the most popular question was like, mm, I see a lot of containers, I see ships, I see transportation stuff, but are you an IT company? Do you have some IT departments? And we say yes, and people, oh really? We thought you're really only a kind of not IT company, but we are. So let's just go back to our short, short history of our company, why we call Hapak Lloyd. Because previously it was two companies different, Hapak and, sorry for my German language, Norddeutsche Lloyd and uh, they have some long history, but you know how it happens, happens globalization, but they was from the same, to be honest, region, but they just merged uh, some years later, and now we are just a Hapak Lloyd. So regarding the Hapak Lloyd, it's again some uh, long German word that I'm not able to pronounce, but it's a kind of Hamburg, American, Stoke company, something like that. And it was a uh, end of 19th uh, century and beginning on the 12th when people were moving from Europe, from Africa, from Asia to the New World, the Americas. Um, as I found an interesting quote from our website, these this people were lit by the hope of being able to escape poverty, prosecution, so that's kind of historical content. And our first customers of Hapak look like this because there were people, Im immigrants, that were moving from uh, from uh, old world to, to the new world. And th that was the solution that we proposed to these people. There were just ships and we just transported people. Uh, after the merge, we also gathered some containers and nowadays our business looks like we have ships, we have containers and we connect the world, we moving goods, stuff and the same stuff. And question, where is the IT here? Because our customer has changed, we do not transfer people anymore. People now... Uh, Time has changed so much, we have an internet, we have an access to the internet and our customer needs also has changed. So 
As we currently only moving the staff, people want to see where is the cargoes, they want to book some space on our ships, some containers, edit documents, and for sure we in the 90s we prepared some uh, online web solutions. Um, in the 90s we started to create a kind of web interface, kind of layer for our internal core system, so anyone who had the internet was able to join uh, our systems and make some stuff online. So in the 90s, in the end of the 90s, the time when it was nice Europe of music, uh, we also had first our systems, it was some JavaScript code, uh, generated in the Java some backend, I think you know everyone legacy code. Uh, so um, that not something was really nice, but it worked. At least we tested it on production with our customers. But the next change came and our customer changed again. So if uh, about 100 years ago, everyone on the some parties, let's say, had a hat, now everyone has a mobile device, and for sure our requirements also changed, and we decide that, yeah, there is a digital transformation is a key for keeping us on the market, and we really need IT. So first of all, uh, I would tell you only about the front-end stuff. Um, we decided that we need a new front-end. There were some requirements, not so much. It should be uh, some nice UI from framework for it with uh, desktop and mobile browsers support. It should be easy scalable and there should be enough um, software engineers on the job market. A nice community, it should be easy scalable and what's important for us, it should be independent. Um, in 2018, it was kind of for the most popular frameworks, at least that were just uh, noticed. It was React, Vue.js, Angular, Ember.js. And as you can see, uh, Ember.js wasn't so popular. Uh, React, Vue.js, and Angular, they were on the similar level, but political thing was about independent stuff because React.js React was kind of uh, developed but implicitly, I would say, owned by Facebook, Angular by Google. And we really huge company and uh, we have a lot of lot of stuff in the Asia, as you can see on the map. So we decided to choose a view just because it has been created by one guy from Singapore and we do not rely on some kind of American company. So we started migration to Vue.js version number two. Uh, it was kind of clever migration because uh, we do not migrate just one by one. We also started to bring some new business features. Mm, and for sure we created some new products from scratch. That's kind of obvious. So let's go to the problems. An interesting fact that we found. So we started uh, our journey with Vue.js in the time when it was kind of options API, that was a standard, uh, but it has kind of low TypeScript support and we thought about, hmm, is there some workaround for it? And we use class components with decorators. I would say that Java people like it, but front-end developers not so much. Then uh, it's a composition API came, if maybe someone of you know, uh, it's a kind of adapter, a new way of writing components in Vue.js. And then it was the idea that Options API is going to be deprecated in a third version of Vue. And then hmm, should we use Options or uh, Composition API? It was for a long discussion on our front-end community. And we decided to choose Options API because uh, Options API is going to be deprecated in the next version. But then what? The third version has been released with Options API. <laughs> so that kind of uh, stuff that was also for us interesting. So regarding the composition API, the most of engineers came from the React and Angular uh, background. We have also juniors, minor, middle, seniors. And from my observation, there were top five typical questions or problems after switching to Vue. Uh, with Compositions API, exactly. The first uh, topic, why should I use implicitly ref and dot .value? Uh, why my array subjects uh, are not reactive? 
uh, why should, how, what the way uh, I can pass uh, properties or data between the components. Okay, we have an even bus, but it's going to be removed, also deprecated in the third version. And the most popular problem, it was why my UI does not react on the change. So it wasn't kind of super easy React uh, JS similar, but after one, two months, I think that was an kind of easy switch for the developers. And uh, even now, it's nice to know uh, what are the typical problems for new newbies. Uh, this, the next problem that Vue.js does not uh, tell us how we should structure our code. Uh, we still have more than 10 products. And the question how we should structure code, because that, uh, of very often that we switch between different products. Uh, we want to have a common solution and we found a very nice solution that we should split it by business features. So what does it mean? Let's assume we have very, very small application with three forms and we decided to create for every uh, part of the for, for the every part of the application that has some, I would say, business value. Uh, separate modules so or here, here you, you, you see three steps like booking, request, review and confirm and we created the same modules and put the code uh, into these folders. I would say it mostly works, but it was a problem with some common stuff that should be in all modules. And that's, that's why we also created kind of a common folder. But I would say this uh, solution was also a evil because a lot of developers start to do not know where to put its code and uh, common folder just start to grow, grow, grow. And uh, on some code reviews there, we found uh, kind of interesting stuff uh, inside the common folders. So that unfortunately solution brings a new problem. Another problem we find that we want to have a common UI components between different products, but here we find just the simplest solution because we want to keep our um, company colors like orange, navy blue, the same input, the same stuff. Uh, so we find a nice framework for us. There are only two requirements that it should be based on Vue.js and support desktop and mobile browsers. We found Quasar, not sure is anyone of you use Quasar. Uh, we are quite satisfied. Yeah, we are using exactly. Uh, there was some small problem that we weren't able kind of to reuse, but we just became a silver sponsor of Quasar and solved this problem. Um, based on Quasar, we uh, first we, cr we have our own design system, and based on this Quasar framework on design system, we created our storybook. I think nothing special, just a set of standard components that are reusable, complex, uh, simple components, uh, kind of Lego that we are currently extending, extending, also updating to the newest version. And it's very nice thing, I would say, but nothing special. <laughs> because I mean, now nowadays everyone I, I think should has like this. Uh, regarding the unit testing approach, uh, the first approach we find that was a classical. So if we have just one uh, form, okay, let's test it that it has been rendered, that it has some children, button input, and component uh, reacts on some handlers. So submit, deleting works. That was our first approach. And then we also decided, hmm, okay, we need also end-to-end -end testing because we want to uh, go through the real user flows. And we brought Cypress. So that, I think, wasn't a very nice decision because we covered too much by, too much by Cypress. Um, that was nice to cover something that not covered by unit testing, like composition of components, banners, notification, also test browser compatibility, go, as I mentioned, through the real user flows. But uh, all the developers, they were not satisfied with uh, time, how long it takes during the CI builds. It was about 10 minutes for every build commit. Uh, there were a lot of problems with not uh, mocked external dependencies and this test just randomly failed and everyone was just, 
I would say, not satisfied with this. And most everyone has a problem with running on local machine. So we came to the point that we have so many Cypress tests and everyone hates it. So we find another solution for it. We decided, okay, what if we can move partially end-to-end -end tests to the unit testing and we reinvent our approach and what interesting, we started to look at the unit testing like a real user. So if I go to the product and for example, I want, uh, I see a form, as a user, I'm not interesting. Was it rendering? Is there any handler or an other technical stuff? If I came to the product, you can see the first scenario. I, uh, I want to see that there is a field that uh, I can submit it if I filled it correctly. If I filled it uh, not, cor incor not correctly, then I see an error message. If I submitted it, I will say I'm able to edit it. And if I want, I can cancel. So we went to this approach. As you may see, there is examples of uh, scenarios. And uh, it's readable. It's readable like a book. And that was definitely advantage of such approach uh, because unit tests became a documentation. We also cover some user flows, but like everything uh, has disadvantages. It wasn't applicable for applicable for the big projects. Um, we anyway started to dis started to test only the modules because some product like booking it was really really massive. And uh, these modules that I mentioned before, uh, split by business uh, features, they were re really, really tightly, mm, tightly connected. And there was very high cost of maintenance because to fix or add something to the test, it means that developers should know the whole user flow and and that's it. So for future improvements, because we are still satisfied on the level where we are, uh, but we decided to experiment to add some bring new value. We are constantly developing ourselves. We decided to try to replace Vuex with Pina because we had some problems with type scripting it uh, in Vuex. And uh, if someone of you has experience with Vuex uh, or with Redux, it has mutations and mostly every mutations looks like getter, setter, getter, setter, getter, setter. And it's just huge files. And to be honest, Pina solved this problem. It just removed mutations and state can be directly updated in actions. So that's something we would like to uh, try in our products. Uh, and we will see. So uh, now the topic about updating the system, I will go to the philosophy a little bit. Maybe it's gonna be more fun here. So as you may, probably know there is already a third version of UJS uh, released two years ago and we were blocked a little bit by Quasar framework and the stuff we created using uh, Quasar. So we are starting our, our migration uh, now and for sure as a software developers we are, oh, let's move to the view version three, but from the other side we have a POS and they question uh, us, uh, why do we need a whole sprint for some technical stuff which do not bring business value? And uh, at some point, it might be misunderstanding, I would say. And I think it's quite often often problem in some companies also who has Scrum, the same stuff. So what's a solution here? Uh, so let's go a little bit to the philosophy. I don't know why I brought this topic, but let's go. I think we are, as uh, engineers, not only software, we are always kind of satisfied with our solution. So if, you f if we go again back to the history, we can uh, see on the left uh, side a photo of the Falovets building. That's quite a famous in Gdańsk. But this is a fresh photo of solution. And also you can find a photo on the right of the Palace of Science and Culture in Warsaw. And what's interesting uh, on this photo, you can see that uh, when it was implemented, it was really white. So uh, did any of you see it white somewhere, somehow? I guess no, you're too young. <laughs> so we can see only photos, but uh, 
just think that these days, uh, in uh, 1952, it was kind of new, it was really cool, at least it looked differently. And what I want to say here, what has happened with this building? Why there are do not look like uh, they looked on the first uh, stage? And uh, if you go deeper to this philosophy stuff, you can see that it uh, happens with a little, uh, with a, uh, different things. Like for example, if you do not clean at home, what's gonna happen with your home? If you do not cut your hair, what is gonna happen? Uh, what is happening with abandoned cities and the same stuff. So is it kind of entropy in philosophy or not? And uh, it's a topic about upgrading uh, the systems. So currently uh, we are stuck kind of here. Uh, th th that is not good because it's uh, 2023 is coming. It's not the fifth, uh, fourth version coming, but currently we are here, but mentally with our products we are still here because we are not updated. And this is kind of technical debt that is uh, growing, growing, and we are, as a software engineer, um, here are also about uh, removing this technical debt, and I would say kind of decreasing entropy, because entropy is about disorder, and if you create some system or some product, and just uh, stay it for five, ten years and do not update, do not make any changes. Uh, is, I, I think it's gonna be uh, the same stuff like abandoned house, abandoned cities. And what's more about the technical debt and us as of software engineers, I guess that's a last uh, shot. So a uh, more philosophical thing that hairdressers, they have job because our hairs are growing. Dentists, they have a, a job because uh, we have caries and caries damage our health. That is not good for us as a, as a people, not dentists. But I think from the software engineer, maybe it's also kind of, I would say, good, wouldn't say good, but uh, technical debt, it's not something bad maybe for us because we have something to do. And um, coming back to the PO, so why should you spend the whole sprint for it and bring no business value? We found also one, solu one solution. Okay, we, we, we can deliver something within the sprint, but let it sell in a kind of clever way that we will uh, bring a new feature and also fix a technical debt in the same time. For, ex for, for example, it was a situation when we had some dialogue in the product and uh, we had technical debt in case it was five different dialogues, but technically it should be only one. And it was a story about uh, adding an uh, email field to this dialogue. And it was a nice incident when we really just fixed a dialogue and, uh, uh, and uh, fixed technical debt. So yeah, my just uh, idea that it's maybe really not nice to put the whole sprint for the updating the system for migrating uh, from second to third version of you but try to sell it to the business uh, more in a more clever way. About the updating system, also be clever. Uh, as you might notice, I also uh, thinking about the systems, not about only products, software engineering. For example, building um, a building, <laughs> engineering, engineering a building, it's also kind of a system. And for example, uh, it was the first version of Gdańsk railway station. It's a postcard. It's not a photo, but picture. Okay. Uh, then it was kind of second dot something version because it was it was also fixed in the meantime. But currently, you know, it's a renovation renovation still. It's still renovating. And uh, as a software engineers, it's uh, maybe also interesting to observe how do they do it because, for example, they started from the outside. And now outside it still look good, what f might be also satisfying for the people walking around. But inside it's mostly invisible for, uh, for us, um, even for some stakeholders, I would say POs. Uh, it's, it looks like on this photo on the right, uh, on the right bottom. Uh, so it's about uh, updating the system that it might be also a clever way. 
I mean, do not, uh, do not uh, throw away everything. Stop and just make it more in, in, in iterative way. Uh, and what's interesting about the updating system? Uh, does any one of you know that there is a clone of Gdansk railway station in France? So also be careful with your updating the system because while you updating the system, someone might copy or inspired by your idea. <laughs> so and build the same solution while you are stuck on updating your uh, your stuff. So for sure there is also some examples of unsuccessful system updates, but I don't want to finish my presentation on some negative notes. Uh, I would say it's just for yourself, but for example, if you take on this, uh, I will back to the follow these buildings and see how they were updated as a system. So it was just a new facade, but the walls, the severe system is a still an uh, old one. Uh, is it a better good way of updating or not? It's up to you because we are engineers, we are up to decide. And one uh, funny thing uh, also, if you are interested it's in human like a system, you can go s also go to Instagram, check out some uh, pop stars, and see how they were updated and judge uh, for yourself. So that's it. Thank you so much. Now it's time for the questions. Dziękuję również. E, tutaj też dla zainteresowanych na ostatnim slajdzie e, mam link, że via hiring są na naszej stronie hapak.loid, możecie znaleźć nasze oferty pracy. Okej, okay. dziękujemy ślicznie.